Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining me on my channel today on this lovely Tuesday. Today I will be using Studio One version four. I was taking a look at some of the comments I got over time, especially as it's in regards to mixing. I've had a few requests and comments and DMs about how to mix or set up a mix and gain staging and multi out and a lot of things like that. And it made me think what would be the best way to approach this because I've approached it before in older videos on my Harrison Mix Bus playlist where I've dedicated, I think, about 10 different videos to mixing. However, I think the questions are coming from people who are reading. <laughs> uh, anytime I see someone mention gain staging in the DAW, it's very curious because it kind of tells me what kind of videos they watch and who they're listening to. So I'm trying to figure out if that's important or not. Because <laughs> in my whole history of doing this, I've never paid too much credence to it, especially when we converged over to 64 bits and we can export at 32. So I've never worried about clipping digitally or anything like that, especially since half of my plugins are lo-fi plugins that clip on purpose. But I can't understand the need for that. However, with trap music, maybe not. I'm conflicted, personally. But I do want to answer that question and I do want to help people set up a mix maybe. Maybe just the beginning stage, maybe catch capturing it um, unprepared, like as you're doing it in the creative process. So I created a project that would suit this particular concept. So this is a very simple project that I have here. It's just a layer of a few synthesizers, some drums and 808. It's your typical trap beat, except for it's untypical in the sense that there's melodies and chords. So <laughs> let's play this real quick. It's gonna be clipping, so please watch your, uh, well, I have some control over that, but definitely um, watch your volume when I hit play on this. Three, two, one. <laughs> So that's peaked on purpose. I'm playing it in my loudspeakers in my room and everything but that voice patch sounded fine to me in the creation process. Like I would normally grab the fader and turn that voice down, but in this context, I haven't done that yet. So I'm gonna take you through all of that, which you should do. And in my humble opinion, the smartest thing to do is probably just to turn all your faders down, <laughs> right? When you get to the point where you have all your ideas and all your drums and everything, just turn everything down. I ain't even in a range yet. So this is just the mix setup. This is the basic mix outline, right? So now I just got drums. And by itself, my drums aren't peaking anything. It's the buildup of low frequencies that push that over the edge. But before I try to negotiate that and fix that in a basic mix context, let's separate these drums out. So when people deal with multi-out in Studio One, the option to enable it is this little arrow pointing to the right here. These channels one through 16 are your multiple outputs. You just check them off to get the mixer track in Studio One for it. That's it. So to my brother who speaks French, who's asking that all the time in all my videos, <laughs> The option is there. You enable that, and then within contact or whatever instrument instrument that you're using um, for the sound, where it has outputs, you choose the corresponding output. So channel two, channel two, channel three, channel three. That's it. And that list is a little bit easier. So kicks on channel one, you see channel one there, and only channel one is enabled. So I'm gonna choose my kick, go here, and Atlas added this feature called sequential. So now each sound goes one through 16 up. All I have to do is enable the channels that I'm using. In this case, since I don't know, I'm gonna enable all 16. And as you look at my mixer across the bottom, it's already filled up. So now when I focus on these drums, I can see which sound is which. And most importantly, I can see what I'm not using. I'm not using five. So now that I can see all my sounds and mute the ones or hide the ones I'm not using, I go through and rename these. Now I'm gonna select all these holding the shift button and then I'm gonna change the color of these so they stand out or with each other. Now, in terms of gain staging and leveling, there's a couple things to consider. When you think of gain staging, you're thinking of the flow of your sound into a plugin. So there's really simple plugins to do this or to make sure you're on point when you do this. And I believe Personas has one. There we go. So this particular plugin is called Mix Tool. So for instance, if I was focusing on this kick and it was ignorant and distorted, or clipping into the red or over zero, I would put mix tool first in my chain before I hit any other plugin. So for instance, when companies like Isotope Ozone give you the suggestion to come in at negative 15, you can do the same thing here. While my kick is playing, if it's too hot going into my plugin, I put mix tool first, turn it down, pre-fader, 
and then run my compressors and EQs after it. Supposedly, that makes it sound better in the processing or gives you more headroom. For instance, if you're in an EQ and you're gonna boost the low frequency of your kick and you're gonna do like a, a boost of 6 dB, then you may wanna give your EQ room before you do that so it doesn't distort or clip within the equalizer itself. So for that case, a lot of plugins, at least modern plugins, are putting input and outputs on the plugins themselves because you could typically hear when you're doing that. That's why the whole process of going through the whole mix and gain staging everything in the traditional sense or in the sense where I think people are asking doesn't make sense to me because most of our new plugins are going to do it or, or give you the tools to do it. So what you're really doing when you do that is trying to make it so that you're not distorting or clipping or creating harshness unintentionally. And you can do that just by focusing on each sound with your ear or just in the mix. And maybe it's the way you're approaching your mix that might be more important than how to mix. Because how to mix is going to change it depending on the record, on the vibe, on the feel, what's on radio, what's charting, what your influences are, what people are requesting from you. All of those things are your tool sets really going to be based around problem solving and not procedure. It's how do you solve certain problems? Usually people. <laughs> so don't get too caught up in the, the rigmarole of make sure it's gain stage, make sure it's pan this. Make sure you do that. Now forget all that. Make sure it sounds good first. So in this context, what we're gonna do, I have binaural pan on my master channel. We can increase the stereo width of our entire mix if we wish, especially if you don't have something like ozone. But I don't wanna do that. I just wanna mix in mono. So I'm gonna hit mono on this temporarily, go through each drum sound one by one and turn them up just to get a relative level of how I want it. Because if we can get the drum mix at a decent level and not cranking or bumping, then we can easily push everything else into perspective. So of course I'll start with the kick. That kick is kicking for Easter. I'll bring my snare in. I'll keep my snare kind of sharp. I don't want my open hat in front of my hi-hats. And that clap's gonna have a reverb on it. I want my crash a little bit louder than my open hat. Voices are usually as loud as the hi-hats because they're so intermittent. Now what I wanna do is worry about the panning. The panning, people look at like graphics and images of a drum set and mirror that. You know, the hats and the open eye hats on one side, the toms and the floors. Like almost every mixing engineering forum site kind of gives you that layout, but they don't ever do that for hip hop, R&B, or urban music. And you kind of have to ask yourself why, considering it's the biggest genre for years and years. No one's actually ever tackled what that arrangement of panning looks like. However, you can freestyle it. I honestly don't think it makes a difference. I, I would say the ones that keep rhythm, keep it in the center. So kick, snare, hi-hat could stay in the center. Your hi-hats can move off center a little bit though. A, one that's common that I hear a lot when I listen to music and headphones is that they'll tilt the hi-hat over just a little bit to the left. So if I'm moving open hi-hat over to the left, then I could probably move my rim shot, which is a rhythm element too, a little bit to the right, depending on how it feels to you. It, it really, there's no, exact rule for it. Open hi-hat, I want to keep it on the side of my hi-hat, but further out. And that crash that's intermittent, I'll move that way further out too, since it happens on a downbeat. And then the Vox, I might auto pan it. I might have it go back and forth since you really can't pick a side because it's voice. There's really no right or wrong. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. So I'm gonna take this auto pan, a slow pan sweep, so it's two bars. That's gonna happen on my voices. My clap is dead center. It's gonna need a reverb. I'm gonna use mixed verb, nothing crazy. Give me like a big shot. And then the rim shot's fine. It has reverb built into it. The crash is a funny thing. I'm gonna put a beat delay on that. So when the, the crash happens, it's Trust me, I'm freestyling this. I'm not, I'm not really sweating the technique. <laughs> I want ju just a mix on all this stuff too in terms of wet versus dry. I'm making sure this is going back and forth. It's staying on one side at the moment. There it is.
Now you work in all the other elements after that. Me personally, I take all my drum elements, I right click them, add a bus for them, and I'll call that my drum bus. So you can compress it, parallel, compress it, add side chain, whatever you wanna do. Um, this is a little bit more intermediate. But on a beginner level, you just wanna set the levels while you're in mono, you can use binaural pan to do that in mono and then bypass it when you wanna put your mix back. Cause if I put it back in mono, it sounds like this. Everything's still centered. Then it opens up. So that's that. Now you can ease in the other elements in the mix just by one by one. So the main thing in this particular track in a modern sense because of the modern day music is going to be the darkest sound, which is this one. Right? It's kind of like an arp. It's kind of like a pad. Now, before we talk about mixing it, when I think of mixing it, when it's you as a producer, I think of color. I think of fixing it. So that's too much going on. I'm gonna add some definition to it with brilliance and I'm gonna filter it a bit. I'm gonna put this back in mono. I'm gonna turn this all the way down. And while my drums are playing, I'm gonna turn this up. I don't want it in front of my snare. I want it lower than my snare. Now the secondary element complements that, and I guess you can alter to alternate them and put the notes up an octave and down an octave to fill out the verse like all the cool kids are doing. Put it in mono. Same story, I might want to control that. My master is not peaking yet, it's not going into overs, it's not turning red because I'm using this as the baseline for the rest of my instruments. In fact, at this point, I can mute my drums because I know nothing's going to be louder than these two. In fact, I just got to make sure these are balanced, right? And that's when you get into EQ and stuff. But I'm going to try to do that without touching EQ yet. Let's keep it mono, let's turn up the melody. The voice was the loudest element last time. My voice needs to be quieter than my melody though, in my opinion. And you hear this wide space with them. Now to help me control this, I'm gonna binaural pan these as well. This sound gets really focused. I'll move that to the right, because a lot of leads in hip hop seem to be panned right. I'm not sure why. And you control how far right it is, which is dope. And what's crazy is it's in its own frequency, its own space way over here. Although my arp and my plucks are right here. So it's out the way. Now with the voice, I can copy that and just switch sides on it. 80% left instead. Now, same story. I could take all of these, right click, add a bus for them, and I'll call it my synth bus or my keys bus. And those sound good at their relative levels together. I'm bringing the drums back in and keep it in mono and readjust this level to make sure it's right. It's missing some highs. So you could put an EQ in your key bus and just raise the highs or deal with the tilt a little bit. So I'm gonna do that first. Let's deal with this high frequency. So around 3K is when it comes alive. So it should die again when I turn this off. Right? So I just gotta turn that boost down a little bit. And that's why you wanted a gain stage. You notice in this plugin, you can monitor the output and input the gain staging is so that you're not going over here, zero. So when you press this up, let's say the max it goes 12, it doesn't go on the red on output. That's all gain staging is. Don't let it get to your head. But I'm not going over even if I did do that, right? Because this plugin is controlling it somehow, some way. That 12 boost does nothing to this. It's negligible. So right around here, it sounds good. I want to dip it at the same time because they said that's the trick they put in this plugin.
Okay. Just like a 12 dB dis difference. But like I said, a lot of sound click producers and people keep that space. And what happens is you end up getting your loudness back or your glue back when you deal with mastering. And that's what L2 is for. I'm actually gonna show you guys that. So last and probably not least is bass. I save bass for last. Cause if you try to mix while the bass is playing, all your frequencies and everything else, especially the low and low mids and your volumes are gonna be off. So now you can just sneak the bass back in. feel it in my headphones, but it's really light. And the urban stuff is a little bit more exaggerated. I'm still not going over here. I hear all the tone of the bass. So everything's clean. No crazy effects, no crazy plugins, just really basic stuff. And then a bus EQ. No compressors yet, no limiters yet. And all of that stuff you start to do in terms of dynamics, like the bass is kind of willy-nilly in the fader, you can see when something needs to be compressed. If one note hits way up here, <laughs> and then the rest are down here, that's when you add a compressor. So my 808 technically would use a compressor. Um, my kick. My hi-hats could use a compressor. That part's up to you. You can pretty much compress everything in this channel or not, or you can just compress the bus and add a bus compressor here. In my context, I use tan just to compress them all together, that all the drums, so I'll solo this, turn my threshold all the way down, ratio to four, attack around here. I just gotta figure out the release and time it with that. It's on point, maybe it could be faster though. All right. So my drums are way more alive. No damage to them yet, no overs yet. But if I turn that off, you see how the kick and everything kind of disappears. So when I do a bus compressor on my drum bus, now I gotta recompare it to everything. So when I unsolo this, I gotta see if I need to turn this fader up or down. I'll turn it down. In fact, I'll make it invisible. And on my master channel, make it mono, and I'm gonna turn this drum bus back up. Too low. I hear everything. That's better though. And it's not where it was. I hear the hats, I hear the snare, I hear the kick. But I might push it a little bit more because that's where I'm from. That's good enough for me. Back in stereo. Plenty of headroom, plenty of everything. So finally, you would export that whatever, whatever, whatever you want to do. You could put EQ on the master channel. You could try to color it yourself. I personally don't have time for that. Just as you get older and you realize you're doing a hundred of these a month, you don't, you probably have a template actually. You probably have a chain already ready for mastering. So since this is the hook of my song or every instrument, every instrument playing at once, the master assistant will base all of his decisions on that. As you can hear, all the levels are raised up. So my volume were relative to what the final was gonna be. So what I'm saying is, you could turn something down low, and then the mastering, an EQ, or a threshold on limiter could raise it back up without you touching your fader. So that's why we mix in mono. We start at zero and push it up just so your ears can hear it or sense it a little bit and a little bit. Because by the time you get into a mastering stage or a compressor stage, the average squashing, so to speak, is gonna make them sound louder anyway. In this case, it did a really good job at that. Now imagine if I would have my levels too hot and then try to ozone it. So I would have hot levels squash, and that's where we get the ugly sound and distortion that people are worried about getting. So I guess my only tip to people for real is just mix low, because you can adjust your gain on any stage of any plugin, really. If your mix was too low, turn it up. If it was too loud, turn it down. 
especially in 64 bits and 32 bits. But if you want best practice, hopefully this video helps you understand the best way to go about that. So this is it. I'll play this through one time, let you guys hear it. From what I can hear, I hear nothing but Space 4 voice. <laughs> you let me know what you think in the comments. Go for clean over stylistic every time until you get to the point where you can afford to go stylistic. But you'll know that. You'll have the budget. You probably won't need me anymore. But anyway, <laughs> I'm MG the Future. Thank you for joining me today. Comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the box below. Until next time, peace.